You remember that guy? Why, why am I bringing that guy back up? Uh, Cause he won. Larry the Cable Guy there won. And all of the other people who freaked out over having to wear a mask on literally a tiny enclosed tube of shared air, they won. They freaked out, they verbally harassed people, they assaulted uh, flight attendants and other passengers and made such a big stink about it that socially they won. Because now the mask mandate for transit, including uh, airlines and trains is gone. A federal judge ruled just yesterday that the Biden administration's mandate uh, board planes, trains, buses and other public transportation is done. They said it's unlawful. This is US District Judge Catherine Kimball Mazel for the middle district of, oh, what do you know, Florida. Anyway, they called the policy unlawful and ruled that the CDC had overstepped its legal authority by imposing the mandate back in February of 2021. Specifically, she didn't like that they had classified it under sanitation. She said that the wearing a mask cleans nothing and quote, at most it traps virus droplets. <laughs> and who cares to do that, David, during a pandemic? So it's and of course gone. And of course, Judge Mizell was, was put on the bench by uh, by Donald Trump. Though there is an upside to all of this because now channeling Larry the Cable Guy, now we can really tell who really does have the whore mouth on the airplane. <laughs> so no, but but in all seriousness, I just I just hope that from now on, um, look, people, I, I suppose you can make the argument that we're sort of well past the most dangerous part of the pandemic, and so maybe it was you know we were erring on the side of caution by having everybody wear masks anyway on airplanes and buses when every, when so many people are vaccinated and whatnot. However. We're now in this phase where I do hope that if if I choose to wear a mask with my kids when we go flying to Florida this coming weekend, I, I don't want to hear any sort of shaming of, oh, why did I have that mask on, you stupid? I mean, no, we should all be in respectful of one another and what our choices are. And my choices may be different from the person who I'm yeah. flying with, and that's okay. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the issue, of course, is that the uh, it's up to me crowd has been downing on people for wearing masks for literally years. And there is every reason to believe that when you take that trip, someone is gonna yell at you, hey, show me your whore mouth, David. <laughs> they just might. Um, by the way- And I might uh, have to show them something else. Exactly, I just, you know. <laughs> perhaps, and that might not be covered with a mask. Okay, <laughs> so uh, according to the CDC, the average of daily new cases of COVID-19 infections has increased by 19% in the past seven days. It's something like 40% over the past two weeks, by the way. 100% of these new cases coming from the Omicron variant. So look, we have been, I don't think that there is anyone like doing a show like this that has given you updated daily information about COVID more over the past couple of years than us. We do it when it's going up, we do it when it's going down. I have been talking about the fact that the death count, the average daily death count has been dropping, where in fact, for the first time in a very long time below 500 deaths per day. And by the way, hospitalizations still trending down. Now I have of course noticed that the percentage reduction has been gradually leveling off to close to zero. And in a time when the case count is going up, my fear is that we're a couple of weeks out of the possibility of those numbers going up. I hope not. In any event, we're in a good situation. We can agree to that, but we're also not out of this situation. And of all of the places, one would hope that the last stand of masks would be on a plane. But no, no, they, they got rid of it. And by the way, they got rid of it in the middle of flights. There's video going around of a pilot making the announcement so that people took off their mask in the middle of a flight. So people that got on there under one set of safety protocols landed with another one, which seems to me to be needless. I feel like you could be consistent for the remainder of that individual flight, but maybe I'm hysterical, I don't know. 
Well, look, there's also the problem with even people who are wearing the masks, who are complying. I mean, there were always the jackasses who, you know, have the mask down just above their lips and not covering mm-hmm. their nose. And somehow they thought that, oh, well, we, we're being compliant when no, you're really not. So, I mean, for all the people who have been sort of flaunting this, okay, yeah, it is a victory. You get to take the mask off completely. You don't have to pretend anymore. But let's just keep in mind, there's still some people who are gonna be flying, who are gonna be on trains and planes and buses who still may be immunocompromised, who still may be vulnerable, who even if they've had the vaccine, they still may be going through, I don't know, cancer treatments. So yeah. if anybody thinks that they've been exposed or they're not feeling well, I would just hope that as respect to your fellow citizen, you would still do something to try to protect yourself from spreading whatever it is you have. I agree, that that should be a bare minimum, but America has for a long time been below the bare minimum. A few more fun details on both the policy, what corporations are doing, as well as the judge. So Mazel, the judge that overturned it, was chosen by Trump for a lifetime judicial appointment at the age of 33. The youngest judge selected, by, that is crazy young. She is gonna be around for a long time. Oh, by the way, she was also rated by the American Bar Association as not qualified to hold the position, but they weren't gonna let that stop them. They said since her admission of the bar, Ms. Mazel has not tried a case, civil or criminal, as lead or co-counsel. They also have a standard that you should have been practicing law for a minimum of 12 years. Uh, she had five years, so a little bit short there. Um, but but a lack of you know like respect or concern for the ABA was hardly the only change that the Trump administration made. In 2017, they also notified the ABA that they would no longer have access to background information on judicial candidates before their nominations. Of course, George W. Bush had done a similar thing. And I would say that it's hardly a show of confidence for the candidates that you think providing background information would hurt more than help them. But that's what they did. Anyway, how are corporations responding to this? Well, Delta put out this message. We are relieved to see the US mask mandate lift to facilitate global travel. Now that COVID-19 has transitioned to an ordinary seasonal virus. Thank you for your support in complying with the federal mask mandate and keeping each other and our customers safe during the pandemic. It is an ordinary seasonal virus, according to Delta. By the way, Uber has announced they will no longer require masks for US riders and drivers. They have this tweet, you can now ride without a mask and use the front seat if you need to. While mask usage is still recommended, we've updated our COVID safety policies. Let's move forward safely together. But you you don't get to say that your focus is on safety when you're announcing an end to the safety measures and saying, and by the way, get up as close to the driver as you want. Sit on their lap if that makes you comfortable. Um, but anyway, yeah, no, it's it's on the planes, it's gonna be on the trains. The only place seemingly where masks are still required, we found out this morning, was on Air Force One. Biden will still be requiring it. But for the rest of us, David, it's just cross your fingers. You can still wear your own, I guess, which was always true. They're like stressing that it's uh, it's still optional. Yeah, I could put cloth on my face before. You're not being like merciful in this. Yeah, now we go back to everybody. Look, hoping that the person next to you, the stranger next to you, doesn't have some dreadful disease that you're going to get infected with. And you know, maybe that's the world that we all want to live in, and maybe we just want to take our chances. But I would argue that even if the death rate is only four to five hundred a day, that's still four or five hundred a day. <laughs> and under normal circumstances, that would be a huge news story. So it's still out there for some people it is still deadly. And again, I just, you know, I hope people use their sort of common sense. And if you know, if you're sick, if you've got symptoms, maybe you don't travel or if you do travel, at least try to protect yourself and and don't shame anybody who decides they want to wear a mask or a visor and protect themselves. Exactly. That seems that seems fair. And for everyone just best wishes. I'm going to be checking those numbers every day. Hope Hope the inevitable doesn't happen again, we'll see, we'll see. I more than anyone else want things to go back to normal. I just don't want us to pretend that they're back to normal before they're back to normal. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is, so you don't miss anything.